Hello, welcome to ExcelExperts.com, the Teach Yourself Excel section, lesson number 16. This is on absolute references. This is the, the most important lesson that you're ever going to learn about formulas. And it's about how to fix a reference when using a formula. That might not be immediately obvious what we're talking about. If you want to follow along with the tip, go to excelexperts.com, the Teach Yourself Excel section, and choose lesson number 16, Absolute References. Download the starting sheet, and then follow the steps one by one. That's what we're going to do now. So here's our starting sheet. We're going to learn about Absolute References. So in cell, so to calculate days ago, so there's two things I need to know. One is what today is, and two is the date that I, I spent the money. So I'm going to enter a formula to calculate today, and then days ago will just be today minus the date that I spent the money. So let's go to J1, and I'm going to enter the label today. And in K1, I'm going to type equals today, that calculates today. I'll press control hash to format it nicely. Then in cell F1, I'll type equals and then K, and then this is the important thing, dollar one minus A2. Hit enter. Notice that formats the result as a date. We don't want that. Let's format it as a number. The reason it does that is because is it thinks you're doing something with dates. So that's a date, that's a date. So it thinks that the return should be a date, but actually it's not, it's the, the amount of days. But let's not worry about that. We'll just press Control Shift Hash and that formats that as the amount of days. Now, double click on the square at the bottom and you will see that cleverly. Excel maintains K1 as the first part of the function. So if I click F2, that shows you the input. So it's that and that. Now in the last lesson, we learned that if you copy a formula down in the next row, it, it will return that one and that one. And the next row, it would go that one and that one. But what we've done is we've fixed the row. We've said to Excel, when we copy the formula down, keep row one always the same. So when we have a look at the next formula, it's still K1, and that's that row has increased, and that's still K1. So we can copy this formula down as far as we like, and it will always maintain a reference to that cell. So that's fixing references. That is extremely important because it allows you to reuse your formula without having to go and type it in every time. Now, what does the dollar mean? So the dollar goes before what you want to fix. So in this case, we're fixing the row. If we wanted to fix the column and not the row, we would, we would choose to put the dollar there. That means if I copy this over to here, that stays the same, but the reference to here will then move over there. If we fix the, the column and the row, so let's press dollar there, and we copy that to anywhere, anywhere we copy that to now, it will always reference that cell. So it doesn't matter how many rows or how many columns we, we copy this formula to, it'll always reference that. This is, is floating, so that will always be relative to the cell we're in. So when we have this formula equals that minus that, this A2 is actually, all it's saying is one, two, three, four, five cells to the left of the current cell. So if I don't fix that reference, this formula will always be five cells to the, to the left. That one we fixed. So that's a very important lesson on fixing references. And using that, we've 
created a days ago column. You've been listening to ExcelExperts.com. <laughs>